Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the main event of the evening, the varsity basketball game, Salesian versus Fordham. Now, uh, we had two basketball games for this one. Uh, the freshman and junior varsity both played uh, against Fordham as well. And uh, it didn't go too well for Salesian. It were, they were uh, narrow, narrow wins for Fordham. The first game ended in a 50 to 16 score uh, Fordham win. And uh, the last game ended in, I believe, a. Uh, how many did they score? Fordham? Uh, it, was, it was near 80. It was about 72. Figured, yeah. They were uh, narrow, easy victories for uh, Fordham. Um, I feel like the. I feel like the, um, the flaws for Salesian were uh, fairly uh, fairly the same for both games. I think it was uh, a lack of defense. Um, although the, the junior varsity team did shoot a bit more from the three point. Um, they did shoot a, little, a bit more threes than the freshman did. Um, they still uh, feel like they were not uh, shooting in opportunities that they should have. Um, like I said, defense is also an issue. And, I mean, you're going to have 75 points that were 
I hate to criticize, but it's the truth. Um, so, very unfortunate. They worked very hard. Good teams, good coaches. Um, didn't get results in their first, uh, I believe this is their second game. Um, but now we have the varsity team. This is the uh, this is the main event of the season. Like I said, uh, this is why everyone's out. This is the proudest game of uh, the evening. I don't know if you can hear, you got like uh, kind of cowbells in the background. Or dance. Uh, yeah, wow. the, the place is getting packed real quick, which is great. I mean, this is going to be a good game. Uh, I mean, Fordham is touted to being really good. I mean, the guys are tall. We, I mean, we, we got a handful here at Salesian, but for the most part, these, these guys are overall pretty tall, they and are the tall. rebound game is going to be key for Salish doing well. I, I, don't, I don't know if it's because we're right behind them, but these guys are like giants. This being the first time we ever did this, uh, it's taken yes. us a long time to go and get online, and uh, you know, part of that is uh, due to our um, technological system, which we're going to work on. We want to do a shout out to... Uh, Manny, who was able to uh, volunteer his hotspot for us to use in yeah, order to uh, bypass the wonderful uh, security that uh, is used here at Salesian to prevent us from uh, exposure to anything of the non-educational variety. Uh, however, it also has affected us with uh, broadcasting this game. But we are here. We are happy we got it working and uh, can't wait to go and see a heck of a battle. It's going to be tough. And the MVP of the night, Emmanuel Darty, senior. I mean, if it weren't for him, we wouldn't have, we wouldn't be able to broadcast this right now. So, I mean, thanks to him, honestly. Um, hopefully, this could, uh, these problems could be fixed because uh, us here at the Sports Broadcasting Club, this is just the beginning, honestly. We still have the rest of the basketball game. Uh, baseball is the sport that I, as well as uh, many of countless other students, um, would love to broadcast. Um, I think that would be fantastic. Um, and we also have other sports as well. Volleyball is a sport that I don't know how many people uh, exactly would be willing to compensate, but um, it's, it's a pretty big sport here as well. Um, you know, it's, it really is just the beginning of sports broadcast. And, uh, you know, another thing is, you may notice, uh, my name is Christopher Gambino, by the way. I'm senior. I'm here with uh, Mr. Gore. Um, we, we have other students who are in sports broadcasting, but some of them were still to quarantine due to health and safety protocols. And that is why, uh, that's why Mr. Gore is doing it uh, with me today. But uh, you might see, uh, it might be me and another student. It might be two other students that aren't even here right now. Um, other students as well uh, weren't able to make it today. Um, but uh, this is, you know, we got a great group of kids here, honestly. A great group of students um, who come every Monday, by the way, for those of you listening. Um, you can listen to our podcast every Monday on SoundCloud at, at uh, Sports Broadcasting SHS. It's a very entertaining podcast that stars um, many of our uh, students at Sports Broadcasting. Uh, me, along with uh, students such as Colin, Colin McGee, uh, Eleftherios, uh, Perselli, and um, Michael Zadrima, as well as many others. Um, but uh, you know, we have a great group of students here who come every week to come up from that podcast, and uh, we'll get more to do with games. And uh, you know, it's really, really great opportunity that we have here at Salesian to be able to do this. You know, you don't see this in many other schools. I don't think you see this in any other schools, uh, at least in our area. Um, so it's really cool that we we're able to do this today. This is a historic night, even though it's uh, technical difficulty. To Kind of, kind of ruined it a little bit, but uh, it's it's not it's nothing to worry about. We're here now. This is the big this is the big event. This is what everyone's here for, and um, I'm excited. And to be honest, I mean we have the local live going on at the same time. If you want to see the game, this is here just for the audio itself to hear your uh, Salesian uh, teachers and students giving uh, analysis and feedback during the game. The games before, as uh, Chris was saying, they were pretty tough. 
uh, the freshmen were just getting used to working together and uh, started heating up around the third, fourth quarter, uh, getting more in a rhythm. But that was a that was a tough loss. Um, they were had a very uh, difficult time with the press, uh, and Fordham uh, basically uh, took them down uh, fairly easily through a lot of turnovers. Uh, the second game, a lot of fouls going between each side, not much being called. Uh, second half, uh, there it was very, very tough for uh, Salesian to uh, keep the ball on their side. Uh, excessive amount of turnover, some of it uh, was their fault with uh, passing. Um, a lot of it was these uh, these hands grabbing across. Uh, it was a tough battle, uh, but they're going to learn from it. They're definitely going to figure out how to go and balance uh, and uh, work together. I believe they won their first game of the season, so uh, this is uh, this is just a way for uh, JV to go and um, improve further on. Varsity, uh, haven't seen too much of them. I have seen a bunch of these students two years ago uh, play when they uh, were on varsity, um, and uh, our own Wigan, who... Uh, was uh, playing on uh, varsity as a freshman, uh, and he's still here. So uh, it should be exciting to watch. They're going to have to play some really, really good uh, boxing out under the boards and uh, trying to get as many foul calls as possible because these guys, uh, if you if you can see from the local live, these guys are big, uh, and I'm sure that's going to go and come into effect. So. Uh, I know uh, Mr. Moresi definitely has an amazing game plan. He'll go by, uh, and it should be uh, should be a good one. Yeah, and uh, you know the senior, the uh, varsity team did win their last game, their first game. It was uh, scored 80, 80 to seventy eight in overtime against uh, Xavier um, away. So that's why you know, we brought them. But, uh, no, a good win for them. Uh, and, uh, I apologize, it's very loud, uh, as it should be, as it should be. Uh, I believe cowbells were just given out to everybody. Um, I, I, I literally have one stand has one. Has one. Uh, so it might be very hard to talk, but... Um, what I'm yeah. saying is, uh, looking at this roster, uh, there are only four seniors. On this team, four. Which is a young team, and that's really helpy. Yeah, it is. It is. You know, this nonetheless is an experience. Keeping in mind the Christian beliefs of all of our schools, all players, coaches, and spectators will adhere to the code of conduct as put forth in our bylaws. At this time, the players and coaches of both teams will shake hands as a sign of the importance we place on sportsmanship in today's game. Players are currently shaking hands. Oh, yeah, the fact that this team is so young is, is if they do well today, it's going to be uh, really, really a promising thing for the future of this program. As many of you know, uh, being in high school, we got eight minute quarters, and we'll be uh, starting post haste. Have you heard anything about uh, uh, Fordham squad at all, Chris? I have not. Uh, I have heard that um, I think this is not this is nothing crazy. That uh, some students in our school are friends with some players on Fordham. That's all I've heard. Uh, I really haven't heard nothing about them. But uh, judging by what we saw from the first two teams, I'd expect them to be very good. They are a very, very, very tall team. And you know, I mean, I thought the guys on Sears were tall. They are. I mean, it's crazy how tall these guys are. Really is. You know, it's uh, the tip off, tip off is about to start. In here, in here, Already, we have the, the fox giving orders, <laughs> as we rightfully should. And Fordham gets the ball at the tip off. Coffin staying up, not being hit by any of the picks that are being set up across. It looks like they're going to try to give, bring it down. And you got Patrick doing some great work over there. 
Ah. They snuck around. Two points for Ford. Hopefully you guys didn't hear that. Coach uh, Marasa just said a uh, yeah, profane word. It's okay. Uh, great pass. That was unfortunately missed by George, but then put back by Patrick under the boards, which is exactly what we need. So it's 2-2 to start. A lot of high energy. The cowbells are going crazy. Ball underneath. Shot missed. Rebounded again. Hit off the rim. Shot from downtown. Air ball. And ball's out of bounds going to Salesian. I gotta say, you know, I was actually, I'm pretty sure the last time there was a triple header here at uh, home um, was two years ago. I was actually present. I was a uh, in the stands. And I gotta say, this, that, this atmosphere is very similar to that. It's crazy to think about, especially what we've gone through the past, uh, over the past two years with COVID, um, the fact that we're finally able to uh, gather together again as, uh, as fans. Um, it's really awesome, the atmosphere that's here today. Uh, really miss this atmosphere. I don't, and uh, yeah, I think I think it's the last time we had an atmosphere like this was before COVID. That night, it was actually against the Regis, um, where the freshman and JV teams. JV is currently uh, those two are current. The other freshman and JV teams then are actually uh, both combined to be the varsity team now. Um, but I remember the varsity team then lost to Regis. Uh, tonight feels like a very similar night, uh, but it seems the varsity team to win here for the season. Profit. Passes to George. To Ryan Will his shot. It's good. Ryan Will with a great shot right in front of the three point line. Made a good crossover move to go make that. Before we had a pause because the shot clock on the left side got stuck and the right side had been working. So they were just explaining that to the ref. It's important to note that with your. Uh, future donations, we can go and probably fix these technological difficulties. Okay, Fordham has the ball then. Number 23 at the front, passes it across. We're trying to go and get a pick across. He takes the three-point shot, and it bounces out. Ryan there for the rebound. Great rebounding moving in. They're moving at a fast pace, which is great for Salise, and they need that. Profit searching for a pass here. Goes into the paint pass to Patrick. This Patrick with the foot in. Excellent job bouncing off the defender to go and put that in. They've been really working hard. A lot of strength there. Making themselves available, pushing down inside. Really playing well right now. Passing the middle, number five, and there's a travel. He slipped. Number five slipped in the middle, and it's Salesian ball. Chris, this is a heck of a start. It is indeed. Uh, I don't know if it's, it feels this way because it's a lack of, uh, you know, interesting, you know, basketball in the past two games. I don't know if because the fans, but maybe it's a combination of both. That's just Livingston off the French pass to start that the first. Game Fantastic move from the corner, too. He was standing at the three-point line, and he just went right across the middle to make that layup. I believe that's six already. Fordham just went and tried to do the same type of thing on the side, and it didn't work for them. They missed the layup, and now Salesian has the ball. Profit at the front. Makes his move towards the play. Goes out the side to Ryan. Ryan. Oh, uh, just missed. John Denavi with the ball. His shot. It's good. Excellent put back by John Denapoli. Usually he's a three-point shooter, but his rebound to put that back was huge. And the energy in this building is insane. It is 10 to 2. 457 on the clock at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, this is a crazy atmosphere. I'm talking like this is like professional level, honestly. I feel like uh, in a lot of professional arenas, 
the atmosphere isn't this loud. I mean, oh, this is crazy. The, the place is completely sold out. We got a really good Salesian crowd here. I really think a big part of it too is like the heart, you know, the, the genuine, uh, you know, genuinely wanting the, the Salesian win. Um, I think that's what's making this crowd uh, feel even that more powerful, honestly. Um, the cowbells are crazy. I didn't think everyone was going to get a cowbell. Uh, that's actually really cool. Um, yeah. I mean, Messi's really hitting home. All the things they got to do underneath the basket and the fact that they have to get to the foul line, as we said before the game started. He's absolutely right. Keep pressing, pushing, and they definitely have a good chance. Oh, nearly grabbed the ball right there, John. Number five went all the way up. Travel. Tried to go shoot it. He called it travel. I agree, though. I, I didn't really see a travel there, but I understand. I tell you, Mr. Morales is a very passionate coach. I mean, that's awesome. A bit of a voice crack there, it seemed like. But hey, he's a passionate guy. That's all. That's all. George Beautiful move. move. Drop it down the middle. Passes it to George with the triple team coming in, and George makes that layup. Phenomenal play. That, I mean, unbelievable start. Uh, foul called there. Uh, a little tough to call, but that's okay. Being that's also, twelve two. Hey, doing this with no three points, honestly. No three-point shooting. All layups, it seems like. And number 23 went for a shot on the baseline. Uh, airballed it. Number five, uh, number 14, sorry, went to go and uh, put it back up. And uh, unfortunately had three Salesians on top. Three throws, missed. And number 14 on four. They get a second shot, though. Chris, did you expect an opening like this? I did not whatsoever. I kind of knew it was going to be a good game. Uh, as number 14 makes his second free throw shot, and it will be a 12-3 game, 12-3 Eagles lead. Uh, but no, I did not. This is unbelievable, unbelievable start uh, for the Eagles. Patrick Livingston already scoring half of their points. Honestly, Jonathan Napoli with the ball currently. There's a good no shot there. Excellent one-hander going right down the middle there, John. Looked like he was going to pass it out. The Fordham uh, uh, guy caught the fake. And uh, going up there with that layup, that was a great, great play. The shot from number 11 from downtown. And just it was a really good pass by uh, Fordham over there to get it out. Uh, unfortunately, missed the three, and uh, there was a lot of uh, Salesian big men underneath to go and create some pressure. But it's Fordham ball on the inbound. And five for Fordham from downtown. He just missed it. Oh, 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 the ball. Nice high leap there. The shot from Wheeling from downtown is just missed. The George on the rebound gets the layup. With Charles Barkley of our team. George is really, really great under the boards with those putbacks. He eats them up. Really good move by Fordham there. Running down on the left side, going up and under to go and put in the layup. 16-5. You can feel the energy in the room. It's kind of slowing down a bit. Pass to Livingston. Flip, flip, flip. Stop it again, going down the center, passing out to the three-point line to Patrick, Whoa. who then went down and did a little floater. Yeah. The thing hit the back. One going underneath, passing to the big man. Four Salesian members surrounding him. 
number 14. And they knock the ball out of his hand. It's still going to be Fordham's possession. We hope that you guys right now are uh, also watching on local live. Uh, you can check our Instagram for that. Uh, you can even type local live into Google uh, to go find it and uh, follow the varsity uh, basketball game. And we got an offensive foul. John went and took the foul. He got hit pretty hard as they were going down to try to make a layup. Uh, layup went in, but it doesn't count. It's Salesian's ball. Profit rushing the ball down the center. He's been doing the whole game, and they get a foul call. So he'll be taking shots. Chris, how does it feel being a senior in a in a situation like this? You know, with the whole crowd and everything, feels good. You know, for a couple of reasons. First of all, obviously, you know, seeing your fellow seniors go out there and play a great game for the floor. Um, but also the fact that, you know, judging by what we've been through the past four years, the profit for the three four. 19 to 5 game now. Um, but yeah, seeing, you know, this atmosphere, you know, come back after what we've been through, um, really feels like in a blink of an eye. Um, we're seniors and now we're watching our own teams, our own former classmates uh, play varsity basketball as Top Field puts up another three four, 20 to 5 good, good, good. It's 20 to 5 with a minute 33 left within the first quarter. As uh, Fordham tries to go to lay up underneath, Profits there smacking around to uh, head out the ball. Fordham touched it while their body was on the out of bounds, so it's the Legion's ball now. Wow, this feels like uh, the complete opposite I was to uh, what we just felt in the last few games. Come on, Profit. Prop doing the same move down the middle. So George, to the George. George again with the putback. Excellent play set up. You can't beat this. That's George's six of the game. And we got a carry, it seems, by number three. So it's another turnover for Fordham. I think the noise is really just getting in on their heads. Rusty's trying to scream, get a lot of attention to get these plays. John puts up the shot, just missed. It was a good attempt to try to get the rebound by Ryan. Number five goes up, a profit with the block. Here's Ryan reeling with the ball. Uh, oh, and it's a bad pass by Ryan. I thought he was coming across, but rough pass there. Yeah, yeah, Patrick stopped at the front. So with 32 seconds left in the first quarter, it's 22 to five Eagles, and we'll court him on with the ball on the outside. The two brings it up. They're trying to set up a play at the front. Uh, trying to make some room. Three isn't working. It has not. And yeah, you're right. It, it, this really has been the opposite of the past two games. Really. So the problem has really been the defense. Or it's kind of it's it's an opposite in a way because yeah, the problem with the has been the defense the past two games. But it also it seemed like they were missing a lot. Of wow! What a play by Profit. Profit just took the ball, made a bunch of moves, got underneath. And then just did an up and over, up and down, whatever the heck you want to describe it as, to put it in a second before the end of the quarter. And we're up 24 to 5 here at Salesian. This is crazy. That was outstanding. There's no other way to put it. Just, I mean, wow. I really think that the, the students are really feeding off this energy in a great way. And, and Fordham is, is kind of getting nervous. You know, and almost makes you wonder why, why was why were the cowbells not handed off for the passing game? I understand there were a lot less people. But, uh, this is crazy. This is really crazy. Now, um, height is not everything in basketball, obviously. 
But uh, you know, judging by the height of the sort of team, uh, I guess if you, if you had to make a, uh, a prediction. I, I, I think many people would choose Fordham to win, and, and they very well can still win the game, but what a start to the season. That's all i got to say about that. Well, we said at the beginning of the game, Chris, how like how how tall Fordham is, but it's just solution has been way more physical. Exactly. That's what's been helping them tremendously. Playing great defense. Not uh, playing very good. Um, Preventing a lot of balls paint. on the inside, playing too. Yeah, good. in the paint, exactly. Yeah. And uh, second quarter is about to begin. The ball being inbounded by John to profit. Profit hands it off to John. John gives it back to Profit. Ryan from downtown. And that good. is in. That was a crazy shot. That, that was crazy. The reason Ryan was on the varsity team uh, his, his freshman year is because of that shot, and it's showing right there. He's missed that. a two, couple of them, but he made that one. Oh, big block by Patrick. With number five underneath. He slipped. The ball. But John. Still got a shot off. John takes a shot from three. Oh, and oh, Napoli. If you get him hot, he's not going to miss. That's another three. 30 to five. This is definitely a flip. This feels like the freshman game in reverse. We're watching basketball. That's all he has said. Great defense by Profit there. Staying low. Two got by him, but he's got help. And Ryan went up to go and do the block, but unfortunately fouled. Yeah, we were saying about Ryan. I mean, I, I remember back in, uh, when he was a freshman when I was a sophomore. I came to that night. I told you, as I said, mentioned uh, before, uh, I came to that night when the Salesian was playing Regis. He was getting threes from the corner. Against Regis, it was crazy. As a freshman on the varsity team, so as number two for Fordham, this is the first free throw. But uh, yeah, I mean, doing it again tonight for Salesian as a uh, junior, I believe this time. Yeah. The energy is so high here; you can feel it in the room. This is his second three throw, I believe. Or did he miss that? No, he made that. He oh, made that shot. I, I, I cannot see him. I cannot see him on my way, but that's fine. We're getting Let's Go Eagles chance here. His profit with the ball onto Wheelan. Pass to the Napoli. John goes into the paint, puts up, tries to put up a layup, got blocked, and it will be a floating ball. Yeah, it was smart by uh, the Fordham player, number 23, to go and bounce it off of John uh, once he had blocked it. Number 23 is going to put the shot up from downtown, and he missed it. Uh, drop it with the rebound over number five. Got in there. Number five I'm trying to go. Down the court. The pass to the relay. The shot. Bang! Another three by Ryan. This is unprecedented. This is, this is crazy. I got nothing to say. I got nothing else to say. This is just unbelievable. Unbelievable. You're playing basically flawless basketball. The shot is put down. And it's good. For number five on four. That was a good shot. But, man, it's a reason. Before that, Almost playing flawless basketball. It's, it's really crazy. Great defense. Great play. And uh, great three point shooting. This is crazy. But we'll see what they can do here. He's catching the ball. Looks like he lost it for a second. Recovered. Pass to Profit. Profit. Searching for a pass. Decides to take the shot from downtown. And he just missed it. Yeah, George didn't have a uh, positioning there to get the offensive rebound, so he let it go. So he's going to take a shot from three. And he missed. Oh, good Number try to three, strip by Ryan. Shot. He misses. Number two up and misses as well. Rebound Patrick Livingston with the rebound. And they're bringing the ball back up. Slowing it down. 
And time out here for some reason. All by the wrestler. There's a timeout. Seems Profit got a little bit of cut. Uh, bleeding a little bit, but you should be okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we appreciate you all watching. We got one like currently uh, and two viewers, uh, as we can see on our screen. So we appreciate the support. And I'm sure we'll get more support uh, when this uh, gets to uh, YouTube after uh, we're done uh, recording. Hopefully we can take the local live coverage and uh, put it together with the audio to uh, create a nice uh, experience for the fans. We weren't able to watch a lot. But, uh, yeah, probably here would have would have cut that not too deep, but just enough to where it's a nuisance. You could tell that probably a loose nail trying to go up for that rebound. He's been really doing a great job getting position to get those rebounds underneath. And 4:53 on the clock as we come back. 33 to nine, Salesian. This is a great way to go and have a crowd come back and cheer uh, after a year of not being able to watch basketball here at school. You know, dare I say, does this make the past two games? Does this make up for the past two games? I'm sure it does. John puts up the three. And John, when he gets hot, he makes it. John Manabu's second from downtown. I believe he's two for two. Number two getting underneath, got nothing, passes it out. Five comes down the middle. He tries to pass out. Ryan oh, saw oh, that. Man. Knocked it out. Great eyes by Ryan to see that he was going to try to pass it out there. They are just swarming this Salesian defense, and that's what they need. I was going up for a layup, number five got it, and did not create a foul. They let him go with the underneath, 36-11, understandably so. Profit tries to go around number five, can't get any room right now. Goes down the middle, gives it John up to John. puts up the shot from three, and he makes it again. I'm sure it's the energy of Miss Garcia being here, rooting him in George on. I mean, they've uh, had her as a teacher junior year and we're big fans. Uh, call a uh, foul there by Prof. He's trying to prevent number two from going around him. They said it was hip block. Kylan trying to go out to go block. They give it number five. He comes up and he stifled three people on him. What a job. Unfortunately, gets out of bounds, but he passes to Wheeling. Wow, you know, I could attempt it or even. I gotta, I gotta say, that is that is unbelievable from Profit. I thought that was out of bounds from our end. The shot from downtown by Fordham is wide. Just missed. Number two from Fordham now. Tries to go for the layup, misses. Well, actually got blocked. Uh, but that was, I was saying, that was, in, that was actually a very, very good move there from Profit. Um, kind of put it around his body uh, to get it past one. And made it like a weird, like, I, I don't even know what it I don't even know what it was, but it looked like it went out of bounds and he kept it in play. And uh it passes to Wheeling who almost made another insane move. Uh, oh foul called George trying to go and get the ball shoulder to shoulder. Uh they're gonna go and uh all that pass out of bounds. I'm sorry, I'm uh pass in down, excuse me. Pull a foul on Thailand there, being in the way. Kind of just took the uh, took the the hit up the middle. Uh, so this is for the three-point attempt. 
It's 39-13. Two minutes 38 left in the quarter. The Thailand's come to sit down. I mean, I've seen Thailand play uh, when he was on uh, the freshman in the varsity team, and uh, he's really seemed to grow into his body, using it really to go get those rebounds, doing an excellent job out there. Fordham misses the extra point. Wow, that was, that was crazy defense there. I dropped it. Nothing really you could say down. while that was going on, but basically, Fordham stole the ball, uh, went up, and missed three attempts to put the to put the shot in, which is uh, really uh, fortunate. But a lot of the players actually didn't come back to help. It was only uh, two and a half down there. John was on the side, but finally got the rebound. And went down the center and uh, was uh, um, hit on the way there. And uh, now they're bringing the ball um, from out of bounds. Patrick puts up the layup. Good job there, Ryan. Ryan went and threw that right up the middle. And Patrick just took it, put it right there. Uh, they had their uh, big man on the outside. It was a great, great move. Play it through by number two for Florida. 41 to 15 now. With a minute, 1.5. Pretty nice hero step there to go and make himself uh, have some room to go and make that shot. Ryan passes to Andrew Hart. Got it. Oh, and I called the legal screen on Andrew Hart. I. I I don't agree with that call. Uh, the coaches don't either. Uh, it didn't look like there was uh, too much of a, a movement to go and block there. Uh, foreign player kind of just ran into him. He wasn't really blocking. Uh, but, you know, with the score the way it is, I'm sure they're trying to go and uh, pad some things down, uh, prevent anything from being created high tension uh, with Gordon losing as much as they are. Patrick tried to go and get the charge call, doesn't get it, and the layup goes in, 41-17. Uh, George with the ball now. George up the middle and loses the ball on trips. Uh, rep said that he tripped on his feet. Uh, I didn't see it, but uh, that was oh, a steal. Know. That went as a layup. Oh, I have one down. Man. Number five is dunk. That was crazy. I mean, when you got guys that height, you got to expect that. And look at this. He's dumbing. What's the chance? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what you're hearing right now is this chance. That, that is not as much that is not the season crowd. Uh, that is that is the visiting crowd. That is the board of fans. Uh, that is crazy. Uh, and now we got let, let's go Eagles fans trying to counter. So let's, uh, let's go Fordham fans. Uh, wow, folks. I, I mean, I'm just stunned because of how impressed people are by a dunk. I mean, yeah, they're in high school, sure, but. It's really uh, I mean, you, got, too special. When you got guys that high, it's not that special. I mean, and Patrick with the certain and a foul there. Uh, I would assume. Yeah, they just fouled uh, Profit. Yeah, uh, that's say, actually uh, good that we got something to slow that down because 15 seconds left in the quarter and uh, energy's trending around. Being up by 30 at one point now, it's uh, 41 21. That's a 20 point difference. Good 
Don passes to George, who takes the shot from three. Wasn't a very good shot, but it's okay. As that is the end of the quarter. Well, that ends the second quarter. It's 41 21 to leave. And, uh, it was a bigger lead just before, but they let up uh, about six points really quickly, uh, possibly eight, uh, that made it this close. That energy is uh, kind of daunting uh, going into the third quarter. You don't want to go and have that energy continue with Fordham. Uh, you want them to go and stay stagnant as before. But I will ask you this, Chris. Did you expect a game like this at all? Absolutely not. I mean, we've seen everything so far, honestly. We've seen, first of all, fans going nuts on both sides. I mean, I I thought that most I thought most of that um, uh, you know, let's go Eagles chance, the cowbells. Um, I thought that covered the whole gym, honestly. But then you saw it later at the end of this quarter. I mean, how loud it got, or at least for us, I don't know if you guys listening heard, it got so loud. Uh, and we're talking like visiting fans, visiting uh, visitors, uh, parents of players on Fordham, uh, friends of Fordham players. Like, crazy how loud it got. But uh, then you also got uh, all the fantastic basketball solutions played. And you got, you got a dunk from Fordham side, which I understand is not insane considering the height of some of these guys, but it's also it's special to see in high school. And uh, that was really what brought the momentum to the Fordham side. But yeah, absolutely crazy start to this game. I mean, hey, for the first time ever commentating a game, really, uh, at least a game going on air, you couldn't have asked for a better game. I mean, this is crazy. As we said, I mean, they are big. Number five is their number one guy. But you know Moresi, he knew that going into this game and set up the defense as it was. He just had enough room on the side in order to go up because Ryan was trying to break off the, the three possibility. But what a heck of an opening. I, I'm i stunned. Uh, I did not expect this to be up by this much. I thought it was going to be uh, fairly close, but this is heavily impressive. Uh Top scorer so far uh, has to be. Uh, it looks like for Salesian, it's uh, John Denapoli. That's what uh, I was going to say. Three threes. Uh, I believe he was three for three from downtown. Uh, and, and unless I'm, I got something wrong. Uh, but he also has two three pointer. I mean, outstanding start to this game. Right? Yeah. Uh, we also had George and Patrick putting those uh, shots back. That was the key at the beginning to get that momentum going. Ryan Whelan, uh, two for four, I believe, from downtown as well. Uh, great job by him as well. Uh, the thing that, that's made me the happiest, having taught uh, most of these students, is, uh, is actually the way that uh, Prophet has been playing uh, with uh, taking his speed down to the center and acting as a Russell Westbrook and passing to the sides, all three corners. It's an excellent setup because if they let him go, as we saw at the end of the first quarter where he made that layup, he is very, very dangerous. But the fact that he is giving himself the opportunity to, in the future, be a triple-double threat. I mean, that is what is helping tremendously. I'm sure uh, there was a lot of things written about him before this game about his speed, and Fordham was ready to defend that, having two to three men come up when he was r running right down the middle. Absolutely. And, uh, oops, I mean, yeah. Nothing else to say. Just an unbelievable game. Uh, well, just to remind people, we are at halftime. Uh, the score is 41-21, Eagles winning. We have about six minutes left till we start the third quarter. And if you want to go and watch this game live while you're listening to us, we encourage you to go to uh, Local Live. You can put that in Google and uh, search up uh, Salesian uh, versus Fordham Prep varsity game. Uh, it's the uh, 7.30 game, and um, you can go and, and watch the game uh, from our uh, Wigan Center camera and listen to us go and commentate while it's going on. You can probably see us in the back as well. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently at four viewers, and we got us another like. We appreciate the support. Yeah, this is the first time we have ever done this here at Salesian, having a live radio broadcast of this with announcing from sports broadcasting a club that only recently started about four years ago 
Yeah, when I was a freshman, I believe. Um, unless he started, he started when I was a freshman. Yeah. So, yeah. Crazy to see how far this has gone. This is stuff we were talking about four years ago. And due to unfortunate circumstances and overall, you know, not being able to you know, put it together, uh, it feels awesome finally to be able to do something like this. And like I was saying earlier, uh, this is just the beginning, really, for this program. I mean, we got, like, like, like I was saying, we have students, we have a good group of students who are part of the program. Uh, some of some of whom are uh, uh, with COVID quarantine and stuff. Uh, we're not able to make it today, but uh, I mean, the good group that we have in this program, so you'll, you'll hear from. You'll definitely hear from. They'll help us um, see the game. Um, and, uh, yeah, for any students listening, uh, you're open to join whenever you want. This is nothing. This is not a program that you have to sign up for. You don't have to pay to join the program. No, you literally just sign up. Uh, you, you probably hear the announcements. Or I don't know if anyone really pays attention to AM students, truthfully, but uh, you know you hear the announcements in the morning if you pay attention. Um, you know we. It's open for every, anyone. If you want to come out every Monday, we have a podcast. And for those of you who aren't students, or if you are and you just want to listen to our podcast, every Monday we have a uh, podcast. I mentioned it before. I'll say it again. On SoundCloud, we have a podcast. Every Monday we record and uh, talk about what's going on in the sports world. And uh, it's a uh, it's, uh, sports broadcasting against SHS. So you're pretty close to that when you're watching some other podcasts. I mean, this is gritty. This is unique to all of us. We've never done this before, so we really do hope you're enjoying our commentary. Uh, I haven't done this since I was in college, and that was a very long time ago. Uh, you know, just to say something, yeah, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, oh, totally fine, Chris. This was my first time ever commentating basketball. I have, uh, this is my first club. I uh, commentated the Turkey Bowl along with Michael Tadrimo and uh, Ethan Justiniano uh, when that happened. And uh, that was my first time commentating football. football or, really, that was my first time ever commentating. This is my first time ever commentating basketball. And uh, I got to say it's been great so far. And uh, we'll continue this for the future. Uh, every game, I don't know exactly when the next game is. Um, but, uh, should be sometime next week. Hopefully, I could be there. Hopefully, we can have a student to do it with me next time. Uh, although having Mr. Boy to do it today has been awesome. And uh, guys, uh, it looks like the uh, players are back on the floor taking their practice shots. And uh, this atmosphere is going crazy again. We got music playing, the people in the crowd are standing up with their cowbells. Yeah, we have about two minutes left until the third quarter starts. A uh, little bit of inside information. Uh, Patrick Livingston was out for a little bit. He got hit in the back underneath the boards, and it's a little tender right now, but he has been shooting around and doing layups, so hopefully he keeps up that energy and he... Uh, he doesn't have to get sat down again. As I said before, uh, if you're into uh, any type of treats, uh, they're doing a great job over there. Teachers are, are, as you said before, everywhere. We have Mr. Reynolds in the crowd, uh, direct center, getting a great view of everything. Mr. Seifring stopped by for a second. We have Brother Bernie out there also cheering everyone on. Father Steve hanging out with the student section. We got uh, Miss Garcia and her family, as well as Miss Yossi and uh, Miss Blandino. And that's a really nice crowd for a game yeah. like this. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, everyone's excited for this. This is the talk of the town, honestly. It's talk of uh, everything, you know. You know, really community. Everyone's talking about it, right? Miss Marissi not as happy with the music choice, understandably so. 
We apologize, ladies and gentlemen. If you uh, heard anything over there, you might have picked it up, but uh, we apologize for any profanity that may have come across. I, I like I, I said it, I said it once. I said it again. Mr. Morassi is a very passionate coach, and you know that's what comes with that. So I mean, you know, I think you hear it, and that's that's. I, I mean, obviously, you know, you don't like to hear profanity on a broadcast, but you know, you're hearing the passion, really. You know, honestly, very passionate about disliking that music, but um, also very passionate about uh, the game, and you hear that throughout the game. Oh, with more people sitting down, we can see Mr. Ragos here, Mrs. Chambers. Father Tom, Brother Bill, Brother Bill, of course. Got a lot of alumni here. Uh, shout out to Puma, who's, uh, you know, coming out from college, playing Division Three, coming here to support us and his old team. Well, if any of you have any music suggestions to play while waiting for the third quarter, maybe next year, next year, well, possibly with January, but maybe next time we will play them. Just make sure it's clean. <laughs> Gordon with the ball for the inbound to start the third quarter. So they, uh, there's a pause. The shot clock uh, wasn't running on the second half, but was on the first. So I was very, they, uh, I was very confused as yeah. to what was going on. There's yeah. 29 seconds on the shot clock now, but it wasn't running at the beginning. And they got it to work. Number 23 for uh, Fordham here. Pass to number two. Looking for a pass. Tries Great to hands. Five, but a nice defense. Great oh, hands by Livingston there to knock oh, it away. The Patrick Livingston. Fordham um, ball here. Number 23. Pass to number five. Well, I think takes the shot. He does. And he just missed it. In and out, it looks like. The layup by number 23, though. And it is 41 to 23. Here. This is Ryan Wheeling with the ball. It's not the type of energy you want to start the game with. Double team on Wheeling. Trying to get the foul call. And they give it. Here's a foul. Number five went to shoot the three before. That really isn't his game, but they got lucky that the ball squeaked away and attempts to rebound and went to number 23, who ended up putting up the layup. Now we have Profit passing side to Livingston. He's trying to make a move. Gives it to Napoli. He comes down the center, gives it across. Tries to pass to George, and unfortunately, he goes out of bounds. And just a bit too uh, hard, right, Chris? They're giving the ball to number five. He's passed out to 23 again. Nowhere to go. Number two tries to go for the layup. Comes in and they call the foul on Patrick. So Fordham will be taking two shots. Two for the free throw. He makes it. Well, Salesian hasn't scored yet. We have not. And it looks like and this is there. Patrick with the rebound. Now this is Ryan. Double team for a second. The pass to George. He gets the try to go for the rebound. Patrick's back must be feeling better. That was a good putback. Number 23 goes. Passing to number five there. We're moving at a quicker pace in the first quarter. A shot from downtown. My number five is good. And that's going to be. That is going to make it a 43 to 27 game. Number five makes a shot and stares down the Salesian bench. I don't know if that's really the right call to make. 
Ryan Hewitt and John Powell. And he makes it to go and call it back on number five. Even it out. Going through with the shot from downtown. Just missed. Patrick tries to get the rebound. Uh, so. Ball was slapped away by John. Hit off the leg of number five. Went out of bounds. It's the Legion ball. If the quarterman does not agree with that decision, players were uh, asking the ref what that was all about. It's tough for us to see from over there, Chris. It was on a turnover. And it is going to get three points for Fordham. The layup put up by number two. And, uh, and before you know it, before you know it, we're looking at a 17 point game here. It looks like Sleeve was in total control. But here comes the Napoli. The pass to the Back to the Napoli. And uh, Fordham tried to do the press there, but Sleeve went and was able to pass around to get to the top. And actually, they're starting up a play. Three. Napoli for rebound. Couldn't put up a good shot there, unfortunately. Looks like he's being double teamed, but number two for Florida. Picks up the layup. That was a very, very good shot there. I gotta say. Number two went around the back to go and do that layup, trying to rub it in, even though they are down. George gets it for two. And George gets the ball after a great pass by John at the midcourt to go and make it 48 to 31. 4 of 30 on the clock. Number two goes, takes a shot. Misses. John goes, passes it up to George. George has got all of it. Halts himself and makes that layup. Oh my gosh, Chris. That was big. 40 gave up on that play. He did. He did, unfortunately. I don't know. Good for Sweden, I guess. Kick made for number two. Short. It. Number 23. Yes. Puts up a second the ball is bouncing around there, but they were unable to get the rebound. After we were in loss, controlled the ball there. And it was out of bounds, and we get four to fall. Patrick tried to make a good pass over there to Ryan, but it was just a bit too low and close to his ankles, went through his legs and out of bounds. Fordham ball. It's 50 to 33 with three minutes left in the third. We can see that just because Salesian's up doesn't mean that Fordham doesn't have a chance to come back. They're going to have to keep with the pressure. Oh, and a beautiful block there from Livingston. But here is number two for Fordham. The shot comes down foul, and it's good. That was a good shot. It was a great oh, shot. It really was. He was well defended by Profit. Got to give credit where credit is due. That was an outstanding shot. Uh, Profit tries to pass to Patrick Livingston. And here's a turnover here, number five for Fordham. Oh, and that's an offensive foul. Bad, bad pass by Profit. But on the way back, held himself, number five, elbowed his way underneath, just went and told the ref he wasn't happy with the call, but it was very, very clear it was an offensive foul. Yeah, that's the second time in this quarter that he's, uh, number five has done that before. Uh, he's trying to plead his case to the ref right now, but I don't think he's going to listen. Number two trying to back him off. I believe that is the same player who uh, dunked earlier in this game, and uh, he's also made a couple of three, three, uh, threes. Uh, a very good player. And, uh, hey, they're a pretty good team. I mean, they're putting up 36 points here. I mean, uh, not the best defense, but you know, the, you know they got a good team up there. The, the major issue with that play, I think, that the foreign prep coach is having is uh, that Profit was uh, near the basket, though outside of the uh, the zone uh, for where an offensive uh, foul can be called. Uh, and I think they were having a discrepancy on where he was standing when that call was made. It was very good. Timing, I would say. Uh, I know I'm a Salesian uh, teacher, but uh, I will admit <laughs> it was a it was a quick smack and a quick turn. But uh, there was definitely a use of physics. I know they're taking physics this year in uh, junior year, and I'm sure he's learned something from that class from this case.
time starting up again. It's going to be Salesian's ball. And John's going to go and be passing the ball out. That was a tough call. George got the ball in the middle, was going to go and pass it to Ryan. Ryan went and made a movement, didn't have possession of the ball, but they called from opposite sides of the angle where they couldn't see that he did have possession and he traveled, so it's Fordham's ball now. That was a tough call, Chris. It was. Number 23 with the shot. George with the rebound. You know, we, have, with the ball we apologize that we have to refer to these uh, Fordham players by their numbers. Um, unfortunately, we are unable to find a roster um, for, uh, with their names. But, um, you know, we'll put it together. It really is, you know, just being a Salesian broadcast, we really uh, point our focus uh, mostly towards Salesian players. Um, but uh, for the future, I'm sure we'd like to uh, try to find Ross or try to find his players' names um, for these other teams. That could help us out on the broadcast. Ryan Newland from the corner. Just missed. Just missed a attempt to rebound by George. A bit too... Uh, oh, to and a block him. by Profit Fields. And here comes Patrick Livingston. And back to Profit. Ryan with the ball now. That is going on. As Ryan puts up another two pointer. Ladies and gentlemen, as uh, right rapidly, that's two for uh, Gordon put up a shot. Uh, that's two more for Gordon. What Ryan just did there was outstanding. He had two defenders zoomed right past him. I mean, there's no other way to put it. That was very fast. And if they ever get the layup there, that was, that was a very underrated play right there. Uh, from uh, junior Ryan Williams. And it's crazy how he made that play. It was a bit sloppy before, but he made a lot of good moves in order to get that layup in. Unfortunately, the defense was a bit slow, and number two was able to go by and make a layup of his own. After that, there was a foul on Profit. He puts a shot, and he does go out of bounds uh, after uh, some pretty good defense by Gordon. Gordon was getting way more aggressive under the, uh, under the boards. And the uh, Salesian ball that uh, was a ball that was knocked out by Ford. And Patrick trying to go up for that shot before. Prof with the ball at the top, takes the shot. George with the rebound. Get all he put there. He got down on the floor, uh, tripped up his feet a little bit, and uh, was out of bounds. So it's uh, Fordham's ball now. Fifty-two thirty-eight. What a minute thirty in the third quarter. And I believe they called an over the top. Uh, they're calling, never mind, they called it on 15. They said he pushed him in the back in order for, to get the rebound, but the uh, ball will be inbounded. Shot by number two is good. Ryan. Look at the shot. Ooh, that line went down hard yeah, on that. I was, uh, I was tough. Uh, they're hustling. They really are. I mean, obviously you would uh, if you're playing for a team, but I mean, hey, they're, they're playing a great game right now, so we usually, I mean, they're, they're putting everything into it. They, uh, they're putting, they're giving it their own. You can have two free throws right now, and he makes them on. Oh. That was pretty crazy how fast that play went um, after the other. Uh, luckily, Ryan's okay. It's a little bruise after hitting the corner pretty hard. And he makes the second. 54-40, minute left, third quarter. Salesian is up. 
Ryan! Get to it! Gordon picks up the shot, misses. From three. Help! Help! Patrick help, doing a good job of getting open. Tried to pass Patrick it to number five all over him. Patrick trying to pass it, get around, and they call the travel before the foot went down. Uh, Marissa unhappy that uh, Prophet didn't go and run over to try to get the help he needed and uh, cause that travel call. Energy's going a little high. It's just happening in the end of the second quarter as well. Number five tried to go up. Ball slapped away by John. And two with the three. Rebounded by number five. And he's fouled on the way up. So number five will be taking free throws. With 36 seconds left, what do you what do you have to say about the third quarter, Chris? I mean, just, just you know, everything. I mean, I'm kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of blanking out here, but oh yeah, yeah, microcosm pretty much is the word I'm looking for. Pretty much a microcosm of everything we've seen in this game. It was very entertaining. I mean, we've seen very good threes. A bit more momentum from the Fordham side of things. As a number five puts a ball, three throw. I believe that's the second free throw. He made both free throws, yeah. Really. Um, but yeah, Florida playing a good quarter, but three. Put up the shot. Right here. But then I believe So John went up to try to make that shot. Got a little fancy and a bounce back. Uh, Florida tried to get the rebound slipped. And by slipping, they traveled. So it's Elysian ball. Uh, but, yeah, this has been just a fantastic play as well. Um, a lot of action. Uh, uh, Ryan from downtown. Uh, fortunately, misses that corner three. I got to say, num num uh, number two, Fordham's played a really good quarter as well. Uh, um, three, uh, three, uh, three. He has a bar. Right now. I'm not taking uh, track of, uh, I'm not keeping track of uh, the Fordham score or anything. Uh, really, Anthony, he's Patrick Livingston the shot from half court. Since it was the end of the quarter, number two, but number two wanted a foul there going down the center, but didn't get the call. Didn't, it looked like the hit was after he had released the shot. Uh, but uh, the energy, really high, a bit too high at times uh, with uh, Salesian losing the ball a handful of, a bit. But definitely composed themselves. We're entering into the fourth quarter. Uh, they look really, really winded, as usual. Mr. Messi likes to go and play his top top people. Um, and they're going to go and be really, really ready uh, <laughs> for the setup of this game. Uh, what do you expect of this conclusion, Chris? It's, it's going to be interesting because, I mean, you look at the scoreboard. You know, so we didn't look like they've been running away with it. It really is only a 12-point game. I mean, from what I've seen from Forum, they are a very good team as well. Um, obviously, have the height. Uh, I have some pretty good players in number two and number five, as well as others. I mean, I, I would not, you know, I, I would, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be surprised if they came back. Um, for Solution, it is going to be all about the defense. But uh, if they can continue to, you know, play great in the paint as they did throughout this game, um, yeah, as well as this insane series, I mean, uh, that's. So it's what's going to come down to. I mean, the, the hot shooting has slowed down for them as well. They were making a lot of shots that first and second quarter. So third quarter, handful of misses. Nothing bad, though. They are trying to stay uh, shooting underneath the boards and taking wide open threes, which they've been doing, and just a little bit hard off the iron, especially for Ryan. Fourth quarter is about to start. Uh, John's going to be inbounding the ball. Uh, we've got our eight minutes. Here we go. Here we head to the fourth quarter of this amazing game that we've had. 12 point lead for the Eagles. Profit Field hands the ball to him. Ryan Ruin takes the shot. That's going to be two for Ryan Ruin. A great move. Step back to go make that shot. Really steady. Yeah, you know. And unfortunately, John uh, lost his defender number 11. Go, go. Put up underneath his cap down low. He gets the ball now at the front. He's going to put up the shot. 
guess the fire is back. If you want to hear what we're talking about, you can join local live, Google that, and see Salesian Ford and Varsity. Join in and watch and listen to us. Yeah, I got to say, you know, I feel, like, I feel like the crowd here in this game is doing a lot of the talking, honestly. You know, maybe when a three is made, I might not, you know, react in time. But John puts a three there. Another three for John. Excellent look by Profit. He could have taken that down the middle. He passed out to John, who set himself up and made another three. But uh, like I was saying, you know, the crowd has been crazy. Number five for four, and misses a three. Also, just to note, John Napoli has committed to Maritime uh, to play on their basketball squad next year. So it's great that he's been able to do that uh, with the beginning of this year. I'm really not the ball and the threes are dropping. Uh, we were talking about before, you know, how the magic threes are kind of going away for a bit for Celine. They're back. I That's think. a nine point spread. Jesus Christ. This is, uh, I mean, if you're Celine, you're feeling a lot better about the number five, though. What's up with Shopkins? Number five tried to make a three of his own, but unfortunately short. And Profit takes the ball at the top. Five minutes left in the game. It's 65-46, Elysian. George makes the move. Goes down the center, and the ball rolls in. I tell you, folks, this is only one place where you can find a better atmosphere than this. I don't even think of it. Honestly, I feel like you know, this is a crazy atmosphere, but I feel like there's one place in the world that has a better atmosphere than this. That's Madison Square Garden, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, that, that's really, I think it's unbearable. Honestly, guys, you know, this obviously being a very, very much smaller building uh, when compared to Madison Square Garden, but obviously it's going to be louder. But I mean, very comparable to Madison MSG in terms of entertainment oh. value. Uh, and passion and crowd, honestly. This is, this is crazy, folks. Oh, there was a double team right there on prop, and they tried to bring it into him. Ryan wasn't coming up on the ball, and that's what Matthew was upset about. George! George! Go. Great pass to Patrick. Back there, just a bit too hard to John. If they went and held that down just a little bit, a little bit too much energy, he's excited. It could have turned out pretty well. I said it's uh, Fordham's ball right now. Number two puts up the shot, miss. Very good move by number two to try to get space with a fake and a step back. But unfortunately, misses that shot. Collision has the ball top. Profit runs down the middle. Pass to Ryan. A little low, and he had to get it himself. And because of that, they took the ball away from him. Number 23 comes up. Tries to go for the layup. Misses. Number five goes up. And runs directly in the Patrick. Gets hit in the face and the in the neck. He'll be taking free throws. With four minutes left, and it being 67-46, you can understand, but a game like this by Fordham, uh, and and the, the coaches are really being uh, critical on this. They don't want this to get away. We've heard many stories about them being able to shoot, and we've seen it today, uh, especially in the end of the second and beginning of the third quarter. As long as that defense holds up and they calm down, it should be a, a good final score. Number five missed the shot. Um, ball was smacked from behind. And they switched the call to Fordham's ball. Originally thought that it was uh, originally thought it was Salesian, but switched the call. Ball's being brought in. Number 23 has it at the top. He comes down the middle. Tries to go and get around camp. Patrick gets the ball, passes it to Profit. 
We're looking to double team him. Passes it out. John's got the ball. Takes it down the center. This is the layup. George tries to get the rebound. Swats around. Number two goes down. He's got a lot of room. And he's fouled by Profit. He's going for and one. Sixty-seven Four minutes to go. Well, with the uh, being that's the fourth quarter, it's important to always bring up the uh, score with you guys. Uh, if you're just joining us, definitely put on local live. Go on Google. You can watch the game with us. Number two just made the extra points at sixty-seven fifty. And number three just fouled profit at the top. It's a good breather for the team. They need it. Everyone's rushing at a pretty high pace. And rightfully so. Ford Prep being down by 17 really needs to start pushing it. Yeah. He's Ryan with the ball. It's a shot. And it bounces on the rim a couple of times. And it came out the I believe that was half the shot. And got it too. 69 to 50 here. Patrick actually put back there. Oh, and Patrick, good defense. Good interior defense there from Patrick, unfortunately. Number three was working really hard to go and put that back. Yeah. George puts up the pass to Ryan Wheeler. I can drop it. And it looks like they're slowing down a bit, as they should. Probably throwing the ball at top. Goes to Ryan. He made the uh, check of the three, but it doesn't count. Timeout called by Maresi on the side. Yeah, you know, it's crazy to think, yeah. I mean, these guys haven't played the whole game. Right? No no breaks. I mean, occasional. I mean, some occasional players in the teams come in to, to uh, take over. But mostly, uh, they're, not, they're not kidding. Uh, Maresi really plays with guys, and that is, I mean, that's good for their future, I guess, but, um, yeah, you can see why they were trying to slow down there for that brief second, I mean, they are playing a whole game, and I understand it's not, you know, NBA, you know, minutes in terms of the quarters, <laughs> but, you know, it is still near, a lot. Near NBA minutes, the way they're playing. Yeah. Uh, it's like they played a full half. Yeah. <laughs> So the if you are hearing that, um, the one shot clock uh, happens to be frozen on the first side. So the secondary shot clock is right. It's 15 seconds on the shot clock. So you're just making sure everything's working. Out. Ball's been inbounded. Profits at the top. Pass it to John, and John accidentally uh, loses the ball. Obviously, accidentally. <laughs> Long day, I'm telling you. And ball's out of bounds for his ball. Three minutes left, though. It's 69-52. Lesion up. Hey, Dad! Send your help put up a two. With a Euro step oh, underneath. Son. Arguably a travel, but they allowed the Euro step to go. And Patrick with the steal on the inbound. Double team in the corner on Profit. Passes it to Ryan on the outside. Oh, John coming in to steal the ball. Gets hit. He's down 71 points with his lead. 71 to 50, 71 to 54, with two and a half minutes remaining in this game. It's a heck of a play. Good job keeping his eyes open uh, when Fordham got the ball before. So before Ryan goes up for the N1, it's uh, 226 left, 71 54. Been a heck of a game, folks. Uh, if you're joining us now, uh, Legion's been playing excellent defense and uh, making a lot of shots. 
Gordon's been a bit stagnant, missing a uh, handful of layups, but they're pr playing hard. Number two going down the middle, he was fouled. And they're going to go and have it inbound. How many timeouts do I have? There's a foul call with uh, number two making his way uh, to get open on the side. Uh, John Napoli with the reach in, they called. Tough to see from this angle. It didn't look like too much, but understandable with two minutes left, 72-54. Yeah. Refs are going to go call anything that uh, seems to be close. Number two puts up another free throw. It's had one half, of, one half of the game right now. Uh, it's good. The reason crowd's trying to distract them, and it does work. That's a good thing. It puts it out of play, but it's such time. I mean, it was a very tough situation there. Yeah. Yeah. The ball was in Patrick's hand and he got hit from behind. They called, oh. called the ball it for tough, Salida. It was tough to see from this angle, but that does make sense. And they call him off a defensive foul. Yeah, they called. 23 was playing pretty tight on profit. I don't. I didn't see too much of a foul there, but they said he was pretty close up there and uh, blocking with his hip, which he can't do. So... Profit is there to go and uh, take free throws. One on one, it seems. Rockets Two minutes first. left, 72 to 55. Rockets first free throw is good. Chris, I'm getting tired. <laughs> we all uh, <laughs> so much to commentate here. It's a heck of a game. And thank you for everybody who uh, has been listening into us. We really appreciate it. First time we've ever done this at Salesian High School. Rockets second free throw is good. Seventy-four to fifty-five. Number two comes up, passes oh, it to number twenty-three, who makes that. the putback. Oh, and, and awful. Gets, and gets the foul. Playing a little bit of lackadaisical defense in the back. I know uh, Miss Mercy and uh, the group doesn't really uh, appreciate that. They they don't want to foul. They want the time to go out. Because every time you foul, it's more time for them to make shots, come back. Even though it's 74-57, you never know. I mean, this is his one free throw. Now here's what Trace Crawford with the ball. Loses control of the ball. It does go back to Florida. Number 23, we'll put it to the layup. So Profit lost the ball, and number 23 was able to get it. Uh, pass from number five. And uh, Florida went and took a full timeout now after making that shot. 74 59. Uh, by my math, that's 15. And uh, with 151, it'll be tough for them to come back, but not impossible. I mean, they could technically make five threes. I've seen a score like this at Salesian where we had won with a last-second shot. So understandable why Marissi and the other coaches are uh, very uh, yeah, I very strict within their uh, play calling right now and the way they're talking to the team. You know, that game, I actually, that was actually the night that I went to. I remember. It was uh, against the Regis. And uh, that was a great. That was by the JV team, who um, is the uh, who are the seniors now, uh, the varsity team. And uh, that was that was a crazy. That was a crazy game. It was like, I mean, I think it was a bit more uh, you know, closer and with more time left. Uh, but it did look at one point like the JV team was out of it by that point. Um, and then they came back. And they hit a buzzer beater. Oh, that was, that was crazy. I remember that game. I was uh, in the stands. It was as well. Straight up, straight up. Go, go, go. Go, go. 
And finally, John's able to get the ball out. This is to Ryan. Great job of dealing with that pressure. Passes it to George, who goes up. Easy layup. Really great play calling right there. And great ball movement. Number two gets the ball, pushes off Profit, and makes the shot underneath. Thirty-second timeout by Fordham. One thirty on the clock. Seventy-six, sixty-one. Salesian up. Well, Chris, this this looks like if uh, continues like this, we're gonna have our first home win of the season yes. a year after being in the pandemic. Yeah, and I don't know what happened last season. I think it was very confusing. Uh, I don't think anyone does. I mean, I don't know if you know anything about what happened last season. Yeah. There's not much. We didn't play any home games here at the Wigan Center, which was really a travesty. Oh, I, I, I could I thought we would have had it at least one or two. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think. How many timeouts do I have? Um, if I'm not mistaken, this might be the uh, first uh, Legion home game since that night uh, against Regis since that triple header. Unless there was something in the playoffs of that year. Um, George, what are you doing? Uh, five second call uh, on the inbound from John wasn't able to go and get the ball out, so it'll be Jordan's ball. Defense! 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 Pass down number 11 back to number two. Make some moves on profit. Oh, that was not a foul. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be saying that, but. Uh, number two made some great moves to make himself open to go and do the shot. He shot under the basket, and there was a late foul call. Yeah, I, I didn't see anything either. I mean, maybe there's something over there that we didn't see very easily from here. It was a tough angle to look at. Uh, but nonetheless, his first free throw. And uh, sorry, sorry to be so uh, blunt here, but ball don't lie. And uh, that is why number two happened to miss. And he misses the ball. Ball don't lie. <laughs> Good pass by Ryan to Patrick. He passes it to John, who's at the three, doesn't take it. Passes it back out. Brilliant decision. Ryan goes. Turnover. Tries to shoot it. And they call a foul. Block number two. Ryan got a bit excited to try to go and score. Should have been holding the ball with a minute left. Now he puts uh, one of the uh, Fordham players on the line. 76-61. There's only a minute left in the game. Minute nine to be exact. And the student section is uh, getting hyped. And uh, number two has missed the uh, rebound. That's the, the third shot in a row he's missed. And number uh, 23 entered the box in early, so uh, no shot. And ball will be inbounded by Salesian. Ryan needs to control the ball. And number five puts up. And Ryan needs the ball again. Number two puts up a shot. And it looks like. You don't take the ball out. Ryan, get away from the basket. Don't touch it. Wow, and there was a foul called there. Uh, Ryan went and got the ball. Number two went and stripped the ball out and uh, put it back, uh, being fouled by Ryan. Coach is over here really, really angry, uh, partially uh, because of uh, earlier calls, but this one wasn't called. This is all based on uh, the uh, placement of everyone trying to get to the ball. Uh, and things aren't just gelling right now. There's 54.2 seconds left. It's 76-63. There's a lot of time, but I mean, if they make a three, it's a 10-point game. And uh, like we were just talking about before with the, uh, the varsity game, uh, the JV game in the past where Salesian came back, I think they were down by eight with 40 seconds left, and they ended up winning that. Uh, anything can happen. So 
uh, like we said before, when uh, Marissi and uh, the other coaches are uh, stressed out, uh, they have every right to be. They know that there can be a comeback, and we really hope this doesn't happen. Go get it. Be a player, man. This is where you are. Not this is where you are like this, man. Go get it. Number two. Number two makes a free throw. A little bit of practice he made that one, I think, Chris. <laughs> oh, yeah, indeed. It was a long time coming. It's his third time at the line in the last 20 seconds. He makes it again. Twenty-six, sixty-five. Profit had the ball in the end, passed it out to the side. Ryan's going to go and try to hold it. John at the front, and they foul him. 42.6 on the clock. 11-point game. Yes. Nerves are really rushing now. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, feel it in the, uh, in the stands. Even uh, Father Steve is slouched with nerves. George with a great rebound. Knocking the ball out from number five who had got it. Ryan nearly lost the ball. Thankfully got it back. John has it, and he gets fouled by number 23. 30.2 left on the clock. Same score, 76-65. For those of you who've been listening to us, really grateful about that. Uh, this is the first time we've ever done this in Salesian history, and uh, we're grateful that you uh, came by and joined us. And for those of you who may be uh, watching this afterwards, uh, we're going to try to go and splice this together with the uh, local live cast and uh, our broadcast and see what happens. Um, uh, you know, it's great to think about in Salesian's long history that this is the first time a game has ever been broadcast and live. It really is crazy. Um, and to think, we had all those issues technologically for the freshman and the uh, <laughs> JV game. We got in time for the main event. And, and hopefully we've been doing a good job doing it justice, uh, continuing this in the future. John just made the uh, first free throw. He's styling the pink shoes today. And he made both. No free, no free. Number two for Fordham puts up the three. The one thing they didn't want, Rusty just said it. No three because you don't want it to be 10. 24.3 left. Blandino went to her phone. She is nervous as can be. We can see it from over here. Manny is hot. Probably worried about his phone. Everyone's getting worried now with a 10-point game in 24.3. Anything can happen. Again, you know, we wouldn't be able to broadcast this game for from Manny and his uh, phone's hot spot. So, it's very uh, true. You know, he's the real MVP. Of this Heavy game. shout out there. Big shout out. Oh, number two, though. They gave him way too much room for that shot. Uh, it was not expected for him to go for the two. Uh, so they got to do that moving forward. They got to go and defend the three because that's the only way they'll be coming back. They're trying to rebound underneath. Number five's in. Number four's in. Uh, they're tallest players. Number five's been putting a lot of effort into this game. Now we got the inbound. Nice play for George. And a football play. George went up front in the middle. They set him up. He turned around, and they did a lob. Excellent pass by Johnny. Chris the quarterback. It was a dime by John, but then number two with a three from downtown. It is a nine-point game. Nine. Nine-point nine. It's as many nines as you can get, folks. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 80 to 70. I can't. We were just talking about this a minute ago. <laughs> you 
no, not for nothing. Uh, for those of you who are uh, familiar with the music industry, uh, from a uh, particular artist named Juice World, who uh, passed away in 2019, is uh, known for uh, 999. That's his. Uh, that's what he's known about. Known for. Um, and he just released an album today, so that's kind of kind of interesting. Chris, that's some amazing commentary. I'm not gonna lie. I mean, yeah, it's it's true. This is his new album today. So, the Legion has the inbound now. Balls pass out to Profit, and he's fouled. Being in the bonus, they're probably going to go to the line. Ten fouls on Fordham, ten fouls on Salesian. 9.1 on the clock. Point eight, yeah. Play defense, that's it. You're questioning the, if the clock moved, and it did. Crawford makes it a 10 point game. No, he missed the shot. <laughs> he missed the he shot, missed Chris. Shot. Yeah, yeah, he missed that shot. He went in and out. Really unfortunate. Not a fan of that rim, to no, be honest. No, Mr. Morris is standing right in front of me, and he's like, hey, what happened? He makes that one, though. He makes it a 10 point game now. Eight seconds left. Mr. Moresi being very nervous here has to stand as the number two. This is the three. And John, that is it. There it is. Number two went for the shot. Tried to get the foul call. Missed the three at the front. And Nate Salesian gets a big win. It was that the over-under was actually 14. 14. Oh, sorry. Excuse me. I misspoke. It was 15. Was the over under for Fordham to win, expecting them to win by 15. And uh, well, we, we saw a near opposite here. Uh, Salesian being up by 30 at one point, uh, but they end up at the very end. It's a, it's a more of a biter, and it's by 10. And they rush out uh, overjoyed to win. Uh, that was a fantastic game. I mean, overall, there's, uh, there's not much to say. It was some magical three, three point shooting. Very good play in paint, um, making a lot of layups. Um, the defense iffy, but you know it was it was it was good enough to obviously win. Uh, Tom, uh, a great game. You know some of the stars. I mean, you got Ryan Miller, John the Nephew, and Patrick Davidson, just to name a few. Obviously, you know, uh, two, uh, many of had top two, 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 two. All had great games. Everyone had great games. That was great ball movement throughout. A uh, little, little bit of sloppiness uh, near the end. They got to work on that. But as always, Marcy played his uh, core. I only got some minutes, but it was mostly the the core, uh, the core five who played that game. And man, I mean. When it came to the rebounding of uh, Patrick and George, that that was tremendous for them with those missed shots. Uh, so, uh, unless you got anything else you wanted to add, Mr. oh yeah, let's yeah. let's go and break down. Uh, who do you think was your uh, player of the game? You know, it's kind of tough to say, but uh, I think I'm actually going to go Patrick with him for the fact that I thought he played a very very solid defense. Uh, it seems like he made a, he got a lot of rebounds. Um, a lot of blocks. Um, not many threes, but obviously, you know, <laughs> came up. Not really his game, but yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I was going to say. But uh, a lot of nice layups. And uh, just a good job. Just a great job by him. Uh, but, hey, a great job by John Napoli as well. Uh, honorable mention. Uh, Ryan Whelan also. Um, everyone had a great game. But I guess if I had to choose one uh, for his defense, um, I think I'll say Patrick. Uh, I actually uh, am going to go with an unsung hero. I'm also going to go with big man. I think George is the unsung hero of this game. I know John made those shots. They were big. Ryan made some big shots. At the game, it could have got a little delicate, you know, but they definitely uh, kept it up with the shots. But it's the big men underneath that got all those rebounds, really caused uh, Fordham to get flustered, especially number five at the beginning of the game. And, man, this this was a heck of a game. What a way to win. Uh, yeah. We got Eric Minson here, by the way. His I have one thing view. to say. One thing. Let's go, Eagles! Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. We're getting people now coming by. So, guys, we just want to go and say um, 
for a first time. This is phenomenal. We're so excited to continue this on. Um, thank you for listening to us. And um, we, we actually got Chris Maranta here who wants to say some words. Para todos los habladores de español, que dicen, juego increíble. Oh, my God. El 22, Papi Juancho. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Chris. And Mr. Uh, Romero has taught him very much. Yes, yes. And maybe we'll get a Deportes version of this in the future. Hopefully, hopefully. But uh, that, uh, I think that's going to conclude everything. This is a fantastic night. Uh, hey, thank you so much to everybody uh, who's who was with us this entire night through all the technical difficulties. Um, you guys are all awesome. And uh, we, guys, like I've said this many times already, this is just the beginning. It really is. Stay tuned. There's a lot more coming to work broadcasting this year. So without further ado, um, this is Mr. Dwyer. My name is Chris. And thank you so much for listening tonight. Have a great night. Yeah, have a great night, everyone. And a uh, great win for Salesian. Let's go, Eagles.